Welcome to Our World Plainly Seen, insights and commentary on the world around us with Dr. Frank Cowper. Good morning. Today is a simple piece. It's entitled Love, Power, and Addiction. All of it may be well known to you. The point I wish to make is a few observations. One is that where love exists, no one in a loving relationship can possibly be all powerful. The thing about love is that it reduces one's power by nature. The reason is that by loving someone, you enter into a circumstance of care, of concern, that leaves you attached to the object of your love in ways that you are powerless by nature. Because love requires freedom, and the object of your love, the thing you want most for a person you genuinely love, is the growth and expansion of their freedom. One never seeks to exert power over one they love. In fact, we do the exact opposite. What we seek to do for the ones we love is to increase the extent to which they move freely and are unencumbered by the imposition of power from anyone, let alone, certainly not myself. So the pursuit of power has no place in the realm of love. It's not even possible in the realm of love because the circumstances, the conditions, the reality of the life going on with the person I love binds me due to their quality as free to a state of powerlessness. If someone I love became sick, I'm powerless to help. Not powerless, but it consumes me and it's their circumstance. I do all I can to serve that person and to try to lift them up out of that affliction. Any parent surely knows the other degree of powerlessness. If your child gets sick, if it's a little child, one is feels almost helpless in the face of that and is doing everything one can to serve and to try to alleviate the difficulties of your young child. If you have teenage children and they begin their era and period of experimentation, they often put themselves in serious danger, either immediate danger or danger of developing habits or styles of life that will be extremely harmful for them in the long run. There's very little one can do under such circumstances. It's a certain form of powerlessness. It's compensated by the riches and the, the fulfilling experiences of being in love with someone, being in love with your spouse, your husband and wife, being in love with your children, being in love with your parents, your aunts, your uncles, being in love with the person who's most helpful on my block. All of this binds me in ways in which power is never considered. The exact opposite of power is the quality of those relationships. So why is it that power constitutes so much of the human experience? The problem is quite simply the lack of love and the deception or the illusion that the rich joys of love can be attained by having the illusory power to cause people to do what you want, to cause outcomes in other people's lives. That's the exertion of power. But the thing about that reality is that love never arises from it, a relationship in which we exert power over others. In fact, all powerful people want is to be liked. That's why people seek fame, fortune, and power. They want people to be attracted to them. They want people to be drawn to them. They want people to be dependent on them. They want people to be bound to them. But of course, the paradox is the more power you exert over people, the more you become hated by those people. And so there is a weird kind of twist, an ugly twist, in which the more people are repelled by me, the more I seek to exert power over them, to keep them bound to me. And the it's an infinitely expanding cycle. It's a deepening cycle. And this is why so much of the world is so deeply 
painful, flawed, so deeply characterized by oppression is because the exercise of power or the flagrant spending of wealth does nothing to provide the individual with the rich feeling of people being genuinely drawn to you as a result of your care, your concern, your serving, your long nights laying awake out of concern for the people you love. That's the true draw. And that's ironically or paradoxically the position of greatest powerlessness. And so the exercise of power over people and the presence of being loved and loving, they're mutually exclusive. They're the exact opposite to impulses. And yet so many people are drawn to fame, fortune, and power to try to fill that emptiness and to try to keep people attracted to them, drawn to them, to try to have people want to be around them. And the very opposite becomes the case. People feel bought, they feel raped, they feel prostituted, or they feel merely oppressed. What happens with power, money, and fame is that one the second thing that happens with it is that it provides the capacity to momentarily or temporarily addict oneself. So with power and with wherewithal, with wealth, you can do things which temporarily distracts me from the reality that no one wants to be around me. No one likes me. No one genuinely appreciates who and what I am because I'm not surrendered to anyone. I'm not caring for anyone. I'm not serving anyone. I'm just seeking to bind them to me by means other than genuine love. So if I'm rich enough, if I'm powerful enough, I can take a minute and 30 second ride up to the lower edges of quote unquote space. That's pretty thrilling. During those minute and 30 seconds, of getting to the lower edges of space. Uh, I'm not really thinking about who doesn't love me and how empty my life is and what's the problem with my personality. I'm just excited. And so I don't even have to be rich enough to take a, a, a minute and 30 second ride into space to addict myself. I can be rich enough to go to a club all night and addict and, and uh, distract myself. I can be rich enough to go to some obscenely overexpensive restaurant somewhere in New York City and addict myself with some ridiculous little one ounce thing that costs $87 or something and show off. And there's plenty of distractions that can come with wealth and power. And during those momentary pursuits of some sort of pleasurability or the loneliness and the fact that I'm not receiving what I want most, namely people liking me or attracted to me or appreciating me, the fact that that's not there at all doesn't really obtain when I'm on, on a popper kind of in a rave or something like that. I forget about that. And so all addictions are basically distractions. And the addiction to power is nothing other than a distraction. The problem with addictions is that my relationship with them is seeking to temporarily destroy my awareness, temporarily destroy my consciousness, to distract myself. And most true addictions basically move toward the annihilation of myself. Drugs, alcohol, even sexual addictions, eventually they move toward self-annihilation. But the problem with addictions is that they are always coterminous with the presence of life in myself, and life desires survival. So an addicted person is a perfectly self-contradictory person. The life within them always seeks survival. The addiction, whatever it might be, always seeks self-destruction. And so life becomes a wreck, an ash heap. We live years and decades in an ash heap based on various addictions. The power one is a curious form of addiction because it is not just merely a blackout, like drinking too much, smoking this crazy strength weed of today, etc. It's not really a kind of a distraction. Power is directly related to what I'm trying most to black out. 
namely that no one likes me, because power is, as I said at the outset, is a direct contradiction to the nature of love, which is the most powerless of all conditions. To be in love is the most powerless of all conditions. To close, I just want to point out that the historical obsession with God and God's power is what has kept human beings distant from God because we don't like being under the power of someone. We like the kindness and care and gentleness and concern and forgiveness that comes from people. We're drawn to that. So one thing I would like us to consider as I close here is that the historical obsession of the power of God actually is a detour, a misdirect. God is the exact opposite of powerful if, in fact, God loves us as many of us have experienced and know. We already know that love, when desiring to keep people free and to expand their freedom, is the most powerless of all experiences. So God's condition, in which he seeks our genuine love toward him, can never be imposed by the imposition of power, despite whatever extent or the fullness of God's power. It's actually the powerlessness of God that is the most interesting dimension or should be the most interesting dimension of religious and spiritual life. All right, those are my thoughts for today. I hope some of them are interesting. Thank you for listening, and we'll speak again together soon.